God by our prayer, touch and agree hour. So if you have any prayer requests or any petitions that you'd like to have uh, connected or touch and agree with, please join us there. We hope to see you soon. So remember to subscribe and we hope to see you there. God bless you. Praise the Lord. This is your host, Elder Gregory Newsom with the Faith in God Internet TV. God bless you on this wonderful Wednesday. We bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is ahead of my life. We want to honor our Honorable Pastor Bishop, Dr. Ellis Murchison, Sr. of the Pentecostal Power Church, and our First Lady, Lady Paulette, and to my own lovely wife, Sister Janice Newsom, Missionary Newsom. And to all of you today, we bring you greetings in the name of the Lord. Uh, we 
are thankful and grateful to the Lord for his goodness toward each and every one of us. And we are uh, ready to uh, share with you today uh, our new topic that we're going to talk uh, from today as it relates to our daily bread. Uh, we want to um, just share our sidebar with you. Uh, as you know, the election, the midterm elections are still underway as far as the vote county. And we hope that those of you that have the right to vote did go out and exercise your right to vote. All right. And so um, we hope that uh, went well with you. I went to the polls on yesterday and uh, we uh, were to get uh, in and out of the polls um, uh, fairly quickly. And I hope uh, you experience a similar, uh, a similar type uh, circumstance. And so uh, let us uh, offer prayer. We want to uh, get the prayer requests for those of you uh, that may have uh, prayer requests for uh, various uh, individuals. There are quite a few on my social media page requesting prayer. So let us continue to pray for um uh, my pastor bishop and lady paulette let us pray for our leaders that the lord continue to bless them and strengthen them and uh uh bless them with uh the things that they need to be successful in in the ministry uh, in the work of god uh, let us continue to pray for our presider assistant presider uh, and their wives let us continue to pray for our senior bishop bishop scott and uh bishop mark jones let us pray for uh Bishop Jones family, his mother in particular, and his family. Uh, let us pray for one another. Pray for uh, Missionary Newson and I that the Lord continue uh, to bless us as well as um, the body of Christ. Uh, let us continue to pray for uh, our local churches as well as uh, those of you that are on the social media channels. We're praying for you and your families. Uh, special prayer for Bishop, uh, well, Pastor Larry Watts. Amen. And let us continue to pray for our Bishop Prather and just many others um, that are requesting prayer. Our Bishop Bullock, Mother Bullock, let us remember them in prayer as well as all of our bishops. Let us pray for Bishop Stone, uh, Mother Stone, and uh, all of the saints uh, in the Southern District as well as the Northern District churches. Let us pray one for another. Uh, we want to go before the Lord in prayer, and then we'll get our second sidebar, and we'll go right into the word of the Lord. Let us pray, eternal God, our Savior, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we come before thee and before thy throne of grace. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we glorify and we lift you up on today. And Lord, we give your name the glory, honor, and the praise. And we thank you, oh God, for your manifold blessings, oh God, that you didn't have to do. Oh, God, but you did. We thank you, oh, God, for blessing us, oh, God. Oh, God, regardless to, oh, God, and in spite of, we thank you right now for life, health, and strength and a reasonable portion, oh, God, of health today. Thank you for a right mind, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for all of those, oh, God, that, oh, God, reached out on social media that we didn't call by name. Some requested private prayers. And we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, you know who they are and you know the situation, oh God, that they're in. And we ask that you would touch them in a special way and grant them healing, grant them deliverance in the name of Jesus, we pray. And Lord, we pray that you would save even now on the day bread broadcast that your word would touch someone's heart and that they may be encouraged they may be strengthened in the name of Jesus and that they may be blessed in the name of Jesus, we pray to the glory of God. We thank you, we decree and declare all the things, oh God, we petition you for, we decree, decree and declare it by faith. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank God. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Amen. So we want to uh, move on just a little bit farther. We thank God for the prayer and you and you and you that are on the broadcast with us today. Um, we um, uh, just want to share with you uh, that we are... Uh, certainly living in the last uh, hours of the church. And so we want to talk about uh, a subject that's relative uh, to the last hour that we're living in. 
and we're going to talk from our, our short subject today, and we're going to probably finish uh, this series today at the Lord's will. Uh, but we're going to talk from the subject of equal pay. Uh, we want to encourage the saints and the people of God and those of you that are uh, uh, considering joining in this Christian race, you don't have to worry about uh, uh, unjust pay. Hmm? We live in a society, we live in a world now uh, where it um, has quite a few divisions. Our country is divided. Hmm? Uh, uh, businesses, uh, conglomerates, uh, they're divided. You know, uh, I want to share with you that there's gender pay. You know, uh, the men uh, gets more uh, compensation uh, than uh, the women. And uh, I thank God that God is not like man. Praise God. I thank God that God doesn't look through the lens of carnality, you know, as 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 we do in in our humanity. You know, we uh, we set stages for uh, ourselves, and we set up downfalls for others by how we uh, look through the lens of uh, equality. And I just want to share with the people of God through. Uh, the word of God and encourage you today. We're going to be coming uh, from Matthew chapter 20. And we're going to talk about equal pay. But before we go to um, Matthew chapter 20, I want to go to a familiar passage of scripture uh, that is found in uh, John chapter nine, St. John chapter nine. Uh, we want to go to uh, St. John chapter nine. Let us go there. Um, and about three and four. Let's go to St. John 9 uh, and three and verse four. So chapter nine of St. John, the gospel of St. John. And we're going to go to nine, uh, three through four. And we know that Jesus had just, uh, 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 dealt with an issue with healing and delivering uh, a blind man, man that was, he was born uh, blind that the glory of God may be made manifest. And after he healed them, the blind man, uh, uh, Jesus had answered some questions concerning uh, the question that those uh, that they had concerning the blind man was who sinned, the man or his parents. And he said that the works of God should be made manifest in this man's life. And so this is what we want to take a look at today. He said that the works of God will be made manifest in this man's life. Okay, so we're going to put the scripture on the screen for you so you can see it. Uh, let's put it on the screen for you. He says here, Jesus answered, and we're in St. John 9 and 3. Jesus answered, neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. And uh, I want to talk about this subject, equal pay, how it relates to how Jesus even looked at everything he did concerning humanity. Uh, he did it from an equality viewpoint. There was nobody that he came across that he felt that was unworthy of his grace and, you know, his uh, uh, divine uh, uh, help that he wanted to give to humanity. He wanted to save mankind. He wanted to save all men's lives. And so Jesus did not have uh, respect to person as we know humanity does. So let's take a look here. So I just want to take a look here. And he says here in verse number four in St. John 9 and 4, he says, I must work. He says, the works of him that sent me while it is day. Hmm? As we talk about equal pay, time is essential. 
Time is the essential element that determines uh, how long and how much we are to be paid in this life. But Jesus deals with it from grace. He deals with it from salvation viewpoint. Of the time doesn't matter. And neither do the length of time matters. Praise God. He says, while it is today, while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. And so this is why we want to focus on this particular subject, uh, equal pay, because there's going to come a time where the work will be completed or we be would be ceased according to God's plan for the church. And so we must work while the church is still here and the Holy Ghost is still in the earth, uh, you know, granting us and giving us everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness, that souls will come to Christ, all right? And so we have been equipped with everything that we need to be successful as it relates to uh, the Lord's plan of salvation for mankind. He gave the command that we are to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. All right. And so that commission, that great commission has been given and it has not been uh, uh, ceased until God come back and take the church out of here, which we don't see rapture in scripture, but we can, um, see the word catching away, which references to uh, rapturing, uh, you know, a group or a body of believers, okay? And so we can see it uh, in certain references of the scripture. Um, the word rapture itself is not in the scripture, but we can see the word catching away as it relates to uh, the body of Christ being taken out. You also see it, uh, see a word, References to that is the word caught up, which is another word that we use as rapture in Thessalonians 4 and 16. All right. But we're going to look at this. We want to take a look. We want to get into the subject that we want to talk about today. Equal pay this is very important. Notice I shared earlier that. You know, uh, I have counterparts that I work with before I retired. Uh, I had counterparts that worked just as hard as I did. I had female coworkers. If they didn't work harder than I, some of them work harder than I did in some departments. And so I felt like that it wasn't right for them not to be paid. Oh, let me get out of here. I got to go. I felt like it just wasn't right for them not to be paid the same amount of money for doing more work if not the same work that I was doing, all right? But this is how these conglomerates, this is how the world system is set up. Well, we're going to look at God's system here. This is where I want to encourage you in the body of Christ that God's system uh, doesn't operate in this fashion. And so be encouraged, people of God. Be encouraged, saints. Be encouraged, women of God. Uh, be encouraged, you know, uh, evangelists, missionaries, uh, pastors, be encouraged because there is no uh, gender uh, bias in uh, God's kingdom, praise God, according to the scripture. So let me show it to you. Let's take a look here. We want to go back to uh, a familiar past scripture. Let's go to Matthew uh, chapter 20. And we're going to go to verse number one. Go to Matthew uh, 20 and verse number one. That's where we want to go to. We're going to go to 20 and one. All right, let's take a look. And uh, we're going to do some reading here. I just want to make sure all of our uh, viewers are on with us today. And so if you have a comment or statement that you'd like to make, please join in with us today. Okay. So now we're going to go to a very familiar passage of scripture, which is found in uh, Matthew 20 and 1. Let's take a look. 
Let's see what we got here. And it reads for you hearing here, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. So this householder, uh, he went out and he looked for laborers uh, to work in the vineyard. So Jesus was uh, using this example here uh, that, um, you know, this householder was looking for uh, laborers to work. All right. So this householder looking for laborers to work in, in his vineyard. And so uh, he was uh, looking to hire. He was looking to get a uh, good, wholesome, uh, quality help. All right. To work. All right. And so when he went out, he was looking for somebody that was willing to work. All right. So let's take a look. He says here, and when he had agreed with the laborers. So apparently when he went out into his vineyard that morning to hire laborers into his vineyard, uh, the laborers that he found, they agreed to work. Mm -hmm. These laborers, they agreed to work for a certain amount. Okay. The scripture uses a penny here. The scripture discloses a penny. All right. But, uh, he sent them into his vineyard. So they agreed uh, uh, to the terms of what they were going to be uh, laboring in the vineyard for, the amount of pay or or that they were compensation that they would receive, right? And he sent them into the vineyard and he told them, you can go ahead and start working, all right? Let's look at verse number three. And went and he went out about the third hour. So this uh, householder went out about the third hour, uh, and uh, he took observation, and he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. Hmm? He went out about the third hour, and he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. Now, the reason why we're going here is because um, we're running out of time. And, uh, you know, time is relative. Time is essential to our work. Hmm? Because we got to know that there's not abundance of time left as time continues to progress with the body of Christ, we know that we're living in the last days and we're coming uh, to a closure, all right? Sooner or later, things are going to come to closure, all right? He went out about third, third hour and he saw others standing in the marketplace, standing idle in the marketplace. And he said unto them, go ye also in the vineyard and whatsoever is right, I will give you and they went their way. He found some more uh, uh, laborers that were standing in the marketplace. They weren't doing anything. And so he offered them a job and told them to come and work in the vineyard. And they went their way. All right. And again, he went about the six hours. And he did the same thing about the ninth hour. Hmm? As it was getting close to the end of the day, he did the same exact thing. He was looking for laborers. He was looking for those that he was looking to hire. He was looking for laborers to work. And so he did this process, you know, repeatedly until he got to about the ninth hour and he did the same thing on the ninth hour. All right. And then he did it one more time. And about the 11th hour, he went out and he 
found others standing idle, and he said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? Hmm? He says to them, I got work for you to do. I'm paraphrasing. That's not what the scriptures say. I'm just paraphrasing uh, to give you uh, uh, some uh, illustration, uh, to give you a viewpoint of understanding that he was engaged with them and offered them a job also. And said, why are you standing around here all day? I got work for you. If you want to work, I will hire you to work. Praise God. Hmm? And so these people that were standing around idle, they heard what he had to say. And then he said unto him, because no man hired. This is the response of those that were in the 11th hour. They were standing around idle and their response was, no man hired us. Nobody wanted to hire us. Okay. He answered them. He answered. He said unto them, go ye also into the vineyard. He tells them, go also into the vineyard. And whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. Hmm? He also gives them an opportunity. Hmm? And we can see through the lens of the scripture, God wanted everybody he came across to experience an opportunity to receive salvation. Praise the Lord. Hmm? Isn't that wonderful? He wanted everybody that he engaged to have an opportunity to go into this vineyard and work. All right? All right, let's take a look. Verse number eight, Matthew 20 and eight. This is where we're at. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, call the laborers and give them their hire, give them their pay, beginning from the last unto the first. So he started paying the, the last ones first. Praise God. Now, notice now he had paid, he had got some earlier to work, but he started paying the last ones first. Take special note. He pays the last ones first. All right. So it's very important that we take a look at this. He pays the last ones first. And Matthew 20, 20 and verse number nine, Matthew chapter 20, verse number nine. And when they came that were hired about the 11th hour, they received every man a penny. Hmm? Though the man that came at the 11th hour, they received every man a penny. All right. But when the first came, they supposed that they should receive more. Now, remember in the scripture, they agreed at the beginning to work for a certain amount, which was that penny. Hmm? They should, uh, that they should receive more and likewise receive every man a penny. So the householder or uh, the man of the house uh, gave them all the same. Praise God. This is what the scripture is saying. And they likewise received every man a penny. So even those that came first, uh, they got the same amount as those that got paid in the 11th hour. Okay. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house. Now, I want to let you know, Jesus is the good man of the house. All right. But they murmured against the good man of the house. All right, let's take a look. Verse number 12, Matthew 20 and 12, saying, These last have wrought but one hour. Now take a look at that. These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal to us. This is the thing that people have a problem with. <laughs> Lord have mercy. People have a problem with equal pay. Hmm? But I, you know, I beg to differ because uh, in God's house, everybody is valued uh, the same. Praise God. Hmm? And look at this. And thou hast made them equal to us, which are born the burden and the heat of the day. Look what they say to the uh, good man of the house. Verse number 13. 
And it says here, but he answered one of them and said, friend, I do thee no wrong. Hmm? Didst thou, uh, didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Hmm? This is the problem. You know, when you get people that's not licensed, this is the problem when you get people to work on your house, to work on your car, um, to work on a project for you. They not licensed. And I guarantee you, they always want more than what was agreed on. Hmm? They always want more than what was agreed on. And it's like, no, you agreed to, you know, you agreed to this amount. This is the amount you getting paid. Hmm? But look at this. But the answer and said, but but he answered it, and he answered one of them, rather. Verse number 13, Matthew 20 and 13. Matthew chapter 20, verse number 13. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? He says, Take that thine is and go thy way. Take what, take what is yours. Here it is. This is what we agreed on. Take it and go your way. Hmm? And I will give unto this last even as unto thee. Hmm? He was going to give the same amount to the person that came in the morning. He was going to give the person that worked till the 11th hour the same amount. All right? Verse number 15. The householder says, is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Here's the second issue. People have a problem with individuals doing what they need to do with what belongs to them. Hmm? This is what the householder says. He says, the good man says, is it not lawful for me to do what I will with my own? Take a look. Is thine eye evil because I am good? Now, this is what the good man said. Is your eye evil because I'm good? I didn't, I didn't coerce you. I didn't trick you. I didn't swindle you. We agreed on it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hmm? And when we say we uh, give our lives to the Lord and we're going to serve the Lord. Hmm? Oh, glory be to God. And no matter when we started out, no matter how long it's been since we started out, the same pay will be given. Praise the Lord. This is what the, this is what the good man was trying to disclose to them. Let's go to verse number 16. I'm going to break it down a little farther in just a minute. I'm going to explain it to you. So the last shall be first. And the first last for many be called, but few chosen. So now I want to uh, break this down because uh, we need to understand. Uh, Jesus clarified the difference or he uh, gives uh, clear uh details about uh, the members uh, and the rules concerning heaven, concerning the kingdom, all right? He, he clarifies and he gives clear description uh, as he conveyed this point through this parable because a parable is a... Uh, earthly story with a heavenly meaning, okay? And so he clearly relates this to a heavenly meaning as he describes uh, the membership rules as it relates to the kingdom of God. Hmm? And so a lot of times, you know, we, we can get caught in ourselves and we can get beside ourselves. Hmm? But we have entered into God's grace, hmm? and we have access to God's grace hmm? Hmm? by grace alone. It is God's grace that we hear. Huh? 
And so it's very important that we uh, understand that whatever we're called to do, praise God, that the pay will be the same. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know sometimes we, we uh, may uh, mumble and grumble because uh, we may be like the, uh, we may be like some of the laborers. We may feel like, hey, that person that came in at the 11th hour, why are they getting the same thing I'm getting and I've been here all day? But this is what the agreement was, praise God. Hmm? And whatsoever right he said he was going to pay, and they all agreed to that penny. He did not uh, change the terms as he hired them. He kept the terms the same. Praise the Lord. So it's very important that we look at this point. Uh, we can look at the householder as being uh, God himself. And uh, we can look at the believers as being the laborers or the followers. And uh, we can look at um, the viewpoint of sometime uh, some may feel um uh, more work than others. This is what I want to talk about equal pay. Uh, some may feel more work than others, but we all will be uh, paid uh, what uh, God has said he would pay those that will come and work in his yard. And so uh, eternal life, we all will have eternal life, eternal reward. Hmm? Nobody will get less than the other one. Praise the Lord. Hmm? And so it's very important that we be encouraged and work and work in the kingdom of God. Hmm? And uh, it's very important that we come in and uh, do what we uh, can do in the house of God. Scripture said, whatever you find thy hands to do, do it with all thy might. And so we got to know that there's going to be equal pay for uh, the faithful believer, okay? Um, those who feel like, uh, you know, uh, they're in a higher position or that they're favored uh, because of um, uh, whom or what they're connected to or what position they may hold, hmm? or they may feel su superior because they've uh, been uh, save longer. They've been in the ministry longer. Uh, none of that matters with Christ. Hmm? We must reassure the new convert. We must reassure the new believer hmm? to know that if they uh, will give their lives to the Lord, that God assures the same grace unto them as he does to those that have been here for uh, a long length of time. Praise the Lord. And so, it doesn't matter how long we've been in this race. Uh, it's God's grace that we're saved through faith, and it's the gift of God, uh, not that any man should boast, praise God. And it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's by God's grace that we are saved. Hmm? And so uh, we have access to God by faith through grace. Hmm? And so it's very important that we understand that it's God's grace that granted us an opportunity Oh, glory be to God in the first place. Praise God. And I'm, oh, what a privilege and oh, what a joy divine leaning on his everlasting arm. We got an opportunity to be in the bride of Christ and we have nothing to grumble about. Praise the Lord. We have nothing to complain about. Hmm? We ought to be excited that we've been invited. Glory be to God. I just want to let you know. We ought to be excited that we've been invited uh, to experience God's grace. All right. And so we are in the grandma about, we know there were some in uh, these previous passages that we read, they began to look at others and see what they were doing. They begin to grumble. Hmm? And uh, I want to, I want to go a little bit. Uh, I want to go a little bit farther to explain. Uh, that this parable that Jesus defines and discloses with this heavenly meaning, it wasn't uh, it wasn't uh, about the reward and the pay, hmm? <laughs> but he was talking about 
uh, those that will receive salvation, praise God. Hmm? And so as we talk about equal pay, we want to relate it to salvation, praise God. So I know um, those of you that may have just came on may not understand this topic, but this equal pay relates to salvation. Hmm? That if you would give your life to the Lord, uh, God will save you just like he would save me and save anybody else. Hmm? And it doesn't matter how bad you've done, doesn't matter what wrong you have done, but God's grace is there and we have access to his grace. Hmm? By faith, we have access. So if we believe God, he's faithful and just. If we repent, hmm? if we sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. So I just want to let you know that uh, this relates to salvation. And so I want to encourage you today to let you know that um, grace, God's grace is, is, is unmerited favor. And God was very, very generous. He did not have to give uh, either of those laborers a job. They were standing around. They wasn't doing none um, like some of us. Now, let me let you see our viewpoint, the lens of carnality, the lens of humanity. They were already standing around doing nothing. We would probably say in our carnality, hey, they stand around, they ain't doing nothing. They don't want to work. But look what, look how generous God is as it relates to salvation. Hmm? We all may have been idle doing what we were doing that wasn't pleasing God, but he still reached out for us. His love and his grace and his mercy still reach for us when we were all oh, glory be to God when we was drowning when we were polluted in our own blood love lifted us praise God oh hallelujah glory be to God and I want to thank God <laughs> hallelujah I want to thank God for this equal pay praise God hmm? I'm not gonna get no more huh I ain't gonna get no less praise the Lord <laughs> and if I wanted to rephrase this um particular subject, it would be no more and no less. Praise God. Hmm? I'm not going to get uh, anything more and anything less than what God promised me. And that's eternal life. Praise the Lord. I want to want you to look at this now. God uh, gives us eternal life. We shouldn't begrudge. Hmm? And oh, <laughs> we shouldn't begrudge. We shouldn't uh, resent. Hmm? The things that God has brought into our reality. Hmm? Because if you look at it, none of us was deserving of God's grace. But this is why it is grace, because, oh, God, who was rich in mercy. Hmm? But God, but God, who is rich in mercy. Hmm? He was rich in mercy. Hmm? And he uh, did not uh, base it on what we look like. He didn't base it on uh, what we sounded like. He didn't base it on what, what we were currently doing. But he based it on his love. Praise God. And so should we, as we relate to equal pay, as it relates to salvation, it's because of God's love that we ought to want to see others in the body of Christ. It's because of God's love that we ought to want to see others save and fill with the Holy Ghost and repent of their sins and, and be baptized in water in Jesus' name and receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God give the utterance. Praise God. Hmm? We should not be begrudging and looking sideways at nobody because he granted us the same opportunity that he's granting you. Praise the Lord. Hmm? And there's nothing too hard for God. A lot of people don't expect hmm? uh, uh, to see others in God's kingdom. Hmm? But I want to let you know that if we would repent, hmm? if we would uh, give our lives to God, that we would serve God, no matter how many years we didn't believe 
No matter how many years we didn't pray, no matter how many years that we have uh, done what have you, no matter how much good we have done, it's the same pay. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I want to let you know, uh, God's grace mm -hmm. is to all that will receive it. Mm -hmm. We should not resent God's gracious acceptance of others. Mm -hmm. If God allowed us to be in the church and grant us his grace, We should want to see others in the body of Christ save and fill with the Holy Ghost, just like we are. Praise the Lord. We should want that. Hmm? I wouldn't, hey, I want my enemy to be saved. Praise the Lord. So I just want to let you know, I want my enemy to be saved. You know why? It's because once they get saved, praise the Lord. Hmm? Once they get saved, they will see this glorious gospel. And it may just be they have an opportunity that we'll become best of friends. Hmm? Praise God. God know how to turn things around. And we should pray for the good hmm? of others that they might receive what these other laborers receive. No less. Praise the Lord. And so we should want for others what we want for ourselves. Praise the Lord. And so we want you to be saved. That's what we want. Hmm? We're not putting you down. We're not criticizing you. We're not ostracizing you, even though the word does all those things. But we don't have hmm? a heaven or a judgment place to place you. That's left up to Christ alone. And so we want to let you know there's no room for jealousy over here. Hmm? Sometimes we're jealous at different gifts that's in different ones. Hmm? But it's God that called them all in from, from the first hour to the 11th hour. Hmm? From the third hour to the 11th hour. He called them in. Look at this. And nobody could begrudge the other one because it was the good man's all right hmm? to invite them and to offer them and grant them an opportunity to be employed, hmm? to be in God's kingdom, to have the plan of salvation. It was God's, it was God's uh, authority and right hmm? to invite them. And should, are we or will we be jealous over what God has uh, given another person? Hmm? Do we have a right to be jealous? of somebody else that God has blessed to do the same thing that you're doing? <laughs> Let's take a look. Hmm? Instead, we should focus on God's grace. That's why we're here talking about this equal pay today. It's God's grace that we're all here and that we're all able uh, to receive of the Lord his blessings. Praise the Lord. And since we're here to receive of his blessings, there's opportunity for others to come in to God's grace and work and labor in the vineyard hmm? that they may also not only uh, look at the reward of pay, but be saved in the end. Praise the Lord. So that's what this is all about. Instead, we should be thankful hmm, for what God has granted us and given unto us. And we should be careful how we use hmm, the resources and the blessing that God has placed within our grasp. Hmm? Because it's very, very important. I want to let you know. Um, I want to go to another pastor scripture here uh, as we close out here. And I hope we said something to encourage we're going to go to, uh, I think I want to go to Romans chapter 2. Let's go to Romans chapter 2 real quick. And let's see what it says. Romans chapter 2. And uh, let's take a look. Stay with me. 
All right, go to Romans chapter two. And he says, therefore thou art inexcusable, old man, whosoever thou art that judges, for wherein thou judges another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judges do it the same thing. Some of us were in the same situation as others were in. And God's grace uh, was granted and given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ, hmm, who is the head of the church. Hmm? And we ought to be thankful and grateful to God that whoever, you know, whomever or uh, uh, whatever walk of life you came from, hmm? whether you was a uh, a jailbird, whether you was a, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, womanizer, whether you were a, a thief, whether you were, a, you know, what have you. You know, the list goes on. None of us hmm, can look at another, you know, and, and I'll use an example. If, if, if example, if I was a thief, none of us can look at another thief and say, uh, surely God can't save him. No, I disagree. Hmm? If God can save you as a thief, he can save somebody else that's a thief. Praise the Lord. <laughs> hmm? I'm confident in God's word, and I can reassure, reassure and encourage you hmm? that such were some of you, but you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. So God can save anybody. Praise the Lord. Hmm? So we can't look... Uh, we can't look out of an evil eye in a judgmental eye hmm? and think that God hand is too short that it cannot say God is able to do it. All right. And so that's why we want to bring that scripture so we can know hmm, that it's up to God to extend uh, the invitation. Hmm? And if God extends the invitation, hmm, uh, let's go to uh, St. John. I want to go to St. John. Uh, Nine, uh, nine and I think, uh, what is that? Uh, let's go to six, St. John 6 and uh, 37. I think that's what I want. St. John 6 and 37. I think that's what I want. Yes, that's what I want. I want St. John 6 and 37. He says here, all that the Father give me shall come to me and him that come to me, I will no wise cast out. Hmm? All that God gives to the body of Christ and calls to be saved, he said, many are called, but few are chosen. And if God, and we know since God is calling men everywhere to repent, Acts 17 and 30 says at the time of this ignorance, God winked at, but he's commanding men everywhere to repent. And if they will repent, oh, glory be to God. Hmm? The table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. They can come in and all oh, glory be to God. Be welcome in the house of God. Hmm? And that's why 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 is so powerful. If any man be in Christ, he or she is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You're not going to stay hmm? in the shape that you're in. Hmm? Oh, glory be to God. Because the potter, he know how to take those shattered pieces and put them back in the rightful place that you might be a benefit, that you might be uh, a worker and a laborer in his vineyard and that you might receive the, the plan of salvation, which will grant you eternal life in the end. Now I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I have another scripture I want to show you. Uh, let's go to Ephesians. Uh, go to Ephesians real quick.
Ephesians 1 and 7. It says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace. See that? It's according to God's grace. Wherein he had abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Now you can read uh, Ephesians 1 in your own study time. Read that um, in your own study time to get the fullness of this. So we got to get out of here. Our time has uh, been uh, exhausted. I did have one other scripture. I may not be able to get it because we're closing out. Go to Colossians, Colossians, I'm sorry, Colossians 1 and 20, uh, I believe through 22, I think that's what we want. Colossians uh, 1 and 20 through 22. And having made peace uh, through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him. I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Hmm? He says, and ye were sometimes uh, alienated and enemies in your mind by the wicked works. Yet now had he reconciled. This is why I said we were enemies to God. But he didn't, that didn't, that didn't stop God's love. Praise the Lord. That didn't hinder God's love. Praise God. Hmm? That didn't stop the Lord hmm? from loving on us. Praise God. Hmm? And ye that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by the wicked works. We know we wasn't right before we came to God. Hmm? Even the works we were uh, carrying on with was not right before the Lord, but he yet, all oh, glory be to God, yet he reconciled us through his blood. Praise God. Hmm? He gathered us in him by shedding his blood. Hmm? Look at this. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blamable and unreprovable in his sight. Hmm? Now that the blood is there, hmm? I thank God for this equal pay. Now that the blood is there, God don't see my faults nor my sins anymore. Hmm? But oh, the blood, hmm? the blood is there. Praise God. Hmm? And we ought to be excited that we've been invited and we can be laborers in God's kingdom. Huh? as believers and as people of God. And so there it is. Uh, I, these are the faithful words of Elder Newsom with the Faith in God Internet TV. I hope we said something to encourage you today. We did have more scripture for you as we talked about the equal pay as it relates to uh, the plan of salvation. Hmm? It's to all. This, this, uh, this particular uh, aspect of salvation is to all that will receive, all that will believe. Hmm? John says in uh, uh, John, the first chapter, he says, as many as received him, as many as uh, believed, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. So as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And so I want to let you know today that God uh, is yet in the saving business and he wants to save you. And if you're here today and you need to be saved, you know you want the Lord in your life. There are some things you need to repent about and repent of. We're here today uh, to extend uh, this plan of salvation to you, uh, which is by the Lord Jesus Christ himself, which was given to the apostles and also uh, to us that have received, amen, the Holy Spirit. And so we want to say to you, uh, you need the Holy Ghost. You know, if you got, if you got um, uh, this message equal pay today, this topic equal pay today, you know us about salvation. Hmm? You know, uh, this, you know, finances won't help your situation, huh? If you don't have uh, eternal life, it's not going to help you very much. It'll help you 
uh, get some things accomplished down here. But in the life hereafter, you're going to need Jesus. And so we're here today to share with you, uh, make Jesus your choice. Praise the Lord. We will pray for you. Hmm? We will we will touch and agree with you that God will touch your heart, touch your mind, and that he will grant you the strength. Hmm? And the weather with all that you need hmm? to turn. Repent means to turn, do a 180, not a 360, but to turn around hmm? and walk toward God and not toward uh, the unjust things anymore. Praise the Lord. And if you feel like you repented and you ready to turn from all your uh, ungodly ways and ungodly deeds and you want to walk uh, in the direction toward God, we're here to pray for you today. And so we're going to go into a brief word of prayer and then we're going to let you go. We want to thank you for viewing the broadcast today, but we do want to offer prayer for those that are viewing the broadcast. So let us pray at this time for those that uh, need prayer. Eternal God, our Savior, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we come before thy throne of grace, O oh God, and before thee, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would touch the hearts and the minds of those, O oh God, that were listening, O oh God, to the broadcast on today. O oh God, as it relates, O oh God, to your grace and as it relates, O oh God, to your mercy, O oh God, your abundant grace, that you, oh God, have oh, granted toward us. We thank you today. And Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that somebody that want, oh God, oh God, to change, want to turn those hearts that have repented, Lord, that you would draw them through your love and kindness, through your word, God, that you would save them, God, and that you would transform their lives Oh, God, through the gospel of Jesus Christ, that they will, oh, God, repent and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus for the remission of their sins, oh, Lord. And, oh, God, that they would, oh, God, tarry, which means to wait until they're filled with the promise of the Holy Ghost, according to Acts 2 and 38. Touch them, Lord. Bless them today in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we forever give you glory and praise in the matchless name of Jesus to the glory of God. And Lord, we thank you right now for a great deliverance coming their way. In the name of Jesus, we pray to the glory of God. Thank God. Amen. And amen. Praise God. Amen. So we thank God for you today. Uh, we don't want to bore you. We thank God for we got the one hour in that we needed to get in today. It's supposed to be a beautiful day out today. So we're going to get outside and get a breath of fresh air since it is our last two days of above 60 degree weather. So today is supposed to be about 65 and tomorrow they said about 70. And so we want to get outside and do our final outdoor activities because uh, after this, they're saying we're supposed to be in the twenties. And so for those of you that don't live in Wisconsin and you live in warmer climates, then uh, uh, you kind of, know what I'm talking about. We uh, want to take advantage of the time. Thank you for viewing the Faith in God Daily Bread broadcast. I hope we said something to encourage you today. I want to uh, put some things on the screen for you to look at. Um, we are going to be in our choir annual this week. So just want to let you know our choir annual is going to be this week, starting on Friday at 7 p.m. And uh, we will be on, uh, I believe, our Facebook and YouTube at our church, which will be uh, the PPCMKE on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, that's the church uh, YouTube channel on YouTube and Facebook. Please follow us there. Uh, we will keep you updated. Uh, just want to let you know also that um, we uh, want to put the dates up for you. We want to put the dates up for you for um, our choir annual. They're going to be on Friday uh, at 
7 p.m. is the start time for that service. And then we're going to uh, climax on Sunday at the 4 p.m. All right. I know that's not on the screen yet, but we're going to put that up on the screen for you. Our choir annual, we put the flyer on the screen for you today. Uh, it's going to be our choir annual revival starts on this Friday. And I just want you to be able to see that it starts this Friday, November 11th at 7 p.m., which will be on that Friday. And then we will also be on Sunday, November 13th at 4 p.m. And so we uh, hope that you will come help us lift up the name of Jesus. If you're not doing anything uh, at your particular church or you're not at another function, we'd like you to please come join us. Uh, help us lift up the name of Jesus at the Pentecostal Power Church there on 2331 West Central Street here in the city of Milwaukee. All right. God bless you. Uh, we also have um, our Brotherhood Annual, which is coming up. And so those of you uh, that are in our city, if you're not doing anything, uh, your brethren are not um, busy doing anything, uh, please uh, join us in our annual Brotherhood, which starts in December. It's going to be uh, the second weekend in December, December 9th, which will be on a Friday at 7 p.m. And then on December 11th at 4 p.m., where we'll be concluding our service. So we have uh, two annual services back to back. And so um, the choir starts this weekend. So we will keep posting it so we can uh, have you save the date. Okay. Thank you for joining the Faith in God and that TV. I want to say God bless you again. Uh, please uh, hit like or subscribe and let us know. God bless you in Jesus' name.